What's up, divas? What's up, divas? What's up, divas? What's up, divos? What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back to my channel. You already know what time it is. It is Real Talk Wednesday. Hope y'all got y'all drinks, y'all popcorn, y'all chips, y'all snackies. I got some water, girl, and I have my food downstairs that I put in the air fryer, but I'll get to that after we're done. Y'all know I'll be starving myself for y'all. Like, it's early in the morning. It is 10. 10.08, okay? And why did it take me an hour to do my makeup? Like, I didn't even do anything. Like, I really literally did my eyebrows and tried to do some winged eyeliner, which seems like it takes me forever. It never comes out right. Like, when I tell you it never comes out right, the liner never comes out right. Like, when I look back at my videos, one be up this way, one go out this way, like, they never match. Like, they never are twins. They don't even look like they related in any type of way. They just there, okay? And so that's why I stopped wearing a liner because it just seems like, why can't I get it right? So, and it may not be like my whole lifetime of doing makeup, like, you know what I'm saying? Like the whole time I've been doing makeup, but for the past year or so, like it ain't been right. So I stopped wearing eyeliner and I noticed that sometimes my eyes might look smaller. Sometimes they may look puffy. So I just be trying to make myself look a little bit, you know, relatable, decent. Okay. So I tried to do the liner and I did that and then I had to fix one. And then it was this eyebrow right here that just started pissing me off and kept like, it just wasn't trying to, it, this, it's always this one. It's never the left one. It's always the right one that gives me problems. And I don't know if it's because I'm right-handed and I'm so close, but I could get this one perfect, like with no problem. And sometimes I'll even do this one first. So that way I can follow up with this one. But girls don't work out like that. It just really doesn't work out like that. And so that's what I spent most of my morning on wiping off the right eyebrow like i took like five wipes i wiped my eyebrow off like at least five six times this morning like straight up like I, my eyebrow was getting red i was i was really about to just say fuck it and just not even show my face on the real talk i was just gonna like have like some emojis playing like the whole real talk because it was just like why even bother you know what i'm saying like that's how i felt and then my hair wasn't done like underneath this wig my two cornrows look like somebody's matted, matted, matted mess. Like my hair has only been braided like in two cornrows for like four days. I did my braids like four days ago. And like on day two, it'll look like I haven't done my hair and like like a whole week you know what i'm saying so it looks like it's a mess i should have did it over the weekend but i wasn't trying to do anything this weekend like literally i just okay so saturday i did go grocery shopping i went to winco all right so i went to winco on grocery on saturday me tato and tinky we went now mind you mumsy was supposed to be there too i told her on friday that she was gonna come with me and she was like yes you know, and then Saturday morning at 1030, she's going to come up with her stomach doesn't feel well. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I've got an attitude with her about it because every time that I need you to help me do something, you always come up sick. This is I, and, and before she even came downstairs, I was sitting there and I was talking to Tati about it. And I said, watch she come down here and say that she don't feel good. And sure enough, because she does it to me all the time. And so I don't really be wanting to go off, but I had to go off because I had already predicted it. And you do it to me all of the time. And like, we not, you know what I'm saying? Like I needed your help. So I just took Tinky and, Ta Tinky and Tato with me and my daughter, Nay, her boyfriend, she was at his house. So he lived like five minutes from that particular grocery store. They came over and helped me. You know, I just need help bagging the stuff up because at Winco, you have to bag your own groceries, which is not a problem. You, they give you bags, but you know, you have to bag them yourself. I use my tote bags. <clears throat> like I use the really big Ikea bags. I have a couple of those and I have like regular tote bags because their plastic bags are kind of cheap. And so it's just easier for me to use my tote bags. So they came and helped me do that. That's all I need to help with. You know what I'm saying? But she always be coming up like not feeling well when I need her to help me do something. And like, yeah, Mumsy's a great kid and all, but you're not about to play me. So I did go off and that's what I did on Saturday. Um, she did help me bring the groceries in because I guess me going off. Like sometimes, you know, you really don't want to go off on your kids, but it seems like sometimes you just have to because if they, they will take your kindness for a fucking weakness for sure. You know what I'm saying? Like they really would take your kindness for weakness. So that's what I did on Saturday. And I also, um, I sat on the couch y'all. Like I literally was having like, um, a good time sitting on my couch. Like Saturday we did that. I did that. And it was pretty early. Um, you know, when, when I did that, um, what else did I do? Of course, you know, I'm sorry guys, I'm not paying attention, but of course, of course, of course I did create some bracelets like this one here. Okay, so she'll be on the website. I just wanted to show her off this one here. And I also made like a watch band, uh, the Simpsons edition. 
I made a Simpsons edition Watchmen. Now, when I ordered the charms, you know, I really, they did not really look this big. And I didn't want the charms to be this big for the Simpsons Watchmen. But I did that. You know, complimentary bracelet. I'm, y'all know what comp complimentary mean, right? Okay. So, complimentary bracelet. And then I also did make this one right here, um, which is a Zodiac bracelet, a watch band, excuse me. So, it has all the Zodiacs. So, there's 12 of them on here. And then it'll say Leo on the front, and then it'll give the actual symbol picture on the back. That's for a watch band with a complimentary matching bracelet. So, I did that over the weekend, and I'll definitely link my website down below, goingwiththewindwigs.weekly.com. And, you know, I'm, prom I'm promoting my own self, okay, because that's what we have to do. But, yeah, I do cater to making stacked bracelets. I make custom jewelry, Apple watch bands. I do also sell lace front wigs. Sometimes I make them as well on my website. So that's why it's called Going With The Wind Wigs. And I've been messing around with the website, as y'all can see. If y'all notice, y'all go on it. As y'all can see, I've been messing around with it. So now I have a section made by Muff Accessories and made by Muff Apple watch bands because I really didn't want the same thing in um, those all different things in the same category. I'm trying to break it up. And y'all see a bunch of changes come and go. So please just, you know, just deal with it. You know, that's just me trying to find the niche, my niche for my website. I have to find my niche. Okay. I definitely have to find my niche, but yeah, it took like forever this morning to get ready. I wanted to look presentable for y'all. That's why I have on my little half wig, my little headband wig. Okay. This was one of my favorites and it's from a cheap company. So I absolutely love it. And then, you know, like I said, I was messing around my eyebrows, had to replace my eyelashes. Then I was messing around with lining my lips. So I don't know. Do y'all see any difference? Like I'm trying, I'm trying. Like my daughter Tati is amazing. She's taking me to Ulta. I don't know if I told you guys that, but we went to Ulta like last week and, um, she was, I just stood there like a child in like a little DN headlights. I felt like a little kid with their mother at the makeup store this is how i felt I, I, I felt like my days of transitioning backwards and i all i seen was me and my mother at the store and i'm standing there waiting for her and watching her and so this is what i was doing at ulta and tati was you know using my palm as the swatch to find me the perfect lip liners and lip combos because she wants me to be happy with learning how to line my lips and finding the perfect combo color so that's what we did and she i just stood there and i just gave her my hand and she picked out the colors and then i was like yes no maybe so you know we did that so and she bought me the makeup she bought me a whole bunch of makeup like you know and also ordered me some as well from ColourPop lip liners and stuff like that and more stuff so i have more stuff coming so i I tried these lip liners out this morning and I did find a color out of this collection called all my BFFs that I really like and you know I did my best I'm, girl I'm still learning okay I want I was I kind of like overlined my top lip you know what I'm saying because I mean my top lip is not that predominant it's not really it's there but it ain't there. Like, I, I, I want these nice, perfect full lips. And I, I get it. We have to be happy with what we're born with. We definitely do. But uh, a girl is ready to go get some fillers. O only on the top, a little, a tad bit. A tad bit. Okay? I ain't trying to be walking around looking crazy. But I always was like, I never was like a huge fan of my top lip. So it kind of disappears at times. So, you know what I'm saying? So it kind of disappears at times. So I'm not really like, I'm looking at it right now. I'm not like a really huge fan of my top lip. So I, I'm going to try this lip gloss though that that um, this young lady um, created and it does really make your lips plump I don't know how long it lasts I'm gonna try it but um, girl yeah I'm thinking about getting some fillers for my top lip okay and I know I'm, I'm, I'm 50 girl get over it and just age gracefully but I'm just I'm you okay listen you ever wake up or not even wake up but you just ever look at yourself in the yeah you do obviously right you ever just look at yourself in the mirror and just not be happy with everything that you see you know what i'm saying like that's how i be feeling sometimes and it's unfortunate that we feel that way about our own selves like i think we are our hugest critics in this world that we live in and a lot of times i feel like we compare ourselves to other people that we meet that we may see on social media or out in real life you know what i'm saying and we just we just kick ourselves down sometimes about these things that we're not happy with because we see what another person may look like and we feel like wow i want to be like that or i want to look like that or somewhat like that you know what i'm saying and so we start kicking ourselves down and i'm not kicking myself down but sometimes i just feel like huh, i just want to reverse time a little bit and go back to like my very early 20s or teens 
if that makes sense to you. You know what I'm saying? And that way I could reverse time and I could do things a little bit different. And so my outcome in life might be a little bit different too. You, you get what I'm saying? So I was just looking at myself this morning as I was driving to school, bringing the grandkids to school. And I wasn't really like looking at myself like that because you know, my eyes had to be on the road. But as I was driving, I just was so not happy about how I had looked this morning. You know, I, I refuse to leave the house without any lashes. If I don't have lashes on, I'm not leaving. I mean, I will, but I had on my lashes and the left eyelash was a little bit, it was on, but I just wasn't happy with how my eyelids looked. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I'm 50. And sooner or later, I'm gonna have to look a little bit older, right? And sometimes I just don't want to look older. I just don't want to. And then sometimes I blame it on the weight gain that I look older. You know, when you lose weight, you look a little bit younger. When you gain weight, you look a little bit older. And yeah, I'm 50. I get it. But sometimes I'm just not happy with myself and my appearance. And I'm pretty sure I have um, voiced that to you guys. You know, I'm, I have to realize at a time in my life that we are all human beings and we all go through changes within ourselves mentally physically we all go through these changes and we have to learn that we are not always going to be 100 percent flawless okay and i have to learn that i cannot expect to wake up like that all the time though i would like to i have to realize that i am a flawed person i do have some flaws and i am not perfect and i am human and also, I do realize that I'm very happy that I have made it to be my age. Though a lot of people call my particular age old, shit, they call people that's in their 30s old, which is unfortunate. You know what I mean? Because, I don't know, when I was in my 20s and 30s, I never called anybody in their 50s old. I never thought of anybody in their 50s as being old or even in their 40s as being an old person. Like, I've never thought of that. You know, my mom was my mom's age and I never thought of her being old or anybody else in their 40s when I was like in my 20s. I just never disrespected anybody in their 40s to call them old because I just really never thought that that was an old age. And now when you hear it, you hear it so much now with this young generation, this generation, they have, they're so quick to call anybody old. You know what I'm saying? And it's sad because do you guys not want to get to this age? Like, it's a blessing to be half of my motherfucking century. And I hope to get to be a whole century. I would I would love for that for me. I would love that for me. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm not old, but I am very well seasoned. And sometimes when you are nicely seasoned, okay, you have to realize that there comes things with being nicely seasoned. And so, yeah, some days I wake up and my eyes are a little bit more puffy and I don't look like I'm 20-something. Though I don't go around saying that shit either, okay? But I, I don't know. I'm just sometimes I'm not happy within myself like with with my appearance and I, I guess that's okay because that's a part of being a human being right we're not always happy with things do we do what do we do we either change that or we deal with it right so yeah maybe I do want to change it I would like a lip filler to plump up my top lip I'm, I'm tired of my little top lip okay I've been tired of it and yeah I do want some fillers for my eyes because I do want them to not be so 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 lid like very litty if that's the word okay very meaty all right so yeah i might want a little bit of an eye lift I've, I've wanted an eye lift now for like 10 fucking years but just haven't had the guts to do it girl listen i want a tummy tuck but i ain't got the balls to do that neither so that's why my ass is still kind of like fupa ish all right so i mean i just wanted to share that with you guys this morning um yeah i'm not perfect i'm not even trying to be perfect i just i want to be happy within myself you know what i'm saying i've been through a lot and i just feel like i want to be i just want to be presentable to myself you know i don't want to put on makeup i don't want to have to do my eyebrows you know what i'm saying I, I just don't sometimes and i don't but i don't know guys is it just me rambling I, i'm not really sure but it is what it is but anyway so my daughter yeah she took me and i'm, I'm trying to learn these new lip combo things I, I really am and sometimes i get very impatient with myself because i feel like i'm not doing a perfect job and that's the reason why i brought up the lip thing because i would like to you know not have to line my lips like i don't overly line them but sometimes i feel like when i line them too much i feel like i'm a street walker i feel like i look like a prostitute or something like that i know y'all like girl you stretch it but i'm being for real sometimes when i overline them or line them or sometimes i overline them i be looking like i look at myself and i'm like girl you look like a hooker take that off and i will wipe this shit the fuck off i don't know i don't know what it is about me um today is not a great day for me i mean it is a great day because i woke up so i'm blessed but i just wasn't happy with my appearance and so i had to take a little bit extra time to gather my thoughts and my pearls and make sure that i look presentable for you guys because i don't really want nobody on here talking about me talk about look at april she let herself go look at her she's become she's become 
an old fat YouTuber. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, I definitely don't want anybody to think about me like that. Cause I, I, I'm not that. All right. I'm def. I, I am a little chubby. All right. A bitch is a little chubby. It's okay though. But you know what I'm saying? And I felt like I was losing some weight. I looked at myself in the mirror the other day and you know, how you, like I said, you could feel the light, the light, even if it's five pounds, bitch, you could feel a little bit of lightness. And I just was looking at like my shoulder area and it felt like it was slimming down some. I'm telling you, once October hit, I'm back out there, out there walking. I cannot wait for October to hit. But anyway, so I got a great uh, picture to text message this morning from my daughter-in-law. She sent me pictures of my two grandsons' first day of school today, which is Monday. You know, it's Monday when I do these. So my grandson, JJ, um, he's going to the fifth grade. And my, right, fifth, fifth or sixth, sixth grade. He's going to the sixth grade. He started the sixth grade today. And my other grandson, Julian, who's five, he started kindergarten his first day of school and they look so freaking handsome and i was so proud um i just cannot wait to um hear about their week how their week went you know what i'm saying since they're, they're living in georgia now i cannot wait to hear about how their week went but other than that let's just jump right into this real talk you guys already know what time it is if you have a real talk that you would like me to talk about go ahead and send me an email to muffin is my lovers 2012 at gmail.com or you can send it to april's real talk at gmail.com and please make sure to put in the subject line for either or email real talk if you would like for me to change the names of the people you are referring to in the email email or yourself you can go ahead and let me know or you can do so other than that girl let's just jump into this real talk I love when people will put real talk and they'll put a title with it. Like, cause I love a good title. It lets me know like something is going on, like what to be in store for. So this one is titled, she's just filthy. Okay. She's just filthy. Hi, Miss April and divas and divos. First, I want to thank you for taking the time to read my email and please, if possible, please call me Annie. So Miss April, I am so sad to talk about this. It just bothers me to my core that my auntie has to live in filth. It is filth in my eyes because she to me is a junk collector or hoarder. And even though she hoards a bunch of nothing, it's also very filthy living. My auntie has lived by herself for the last 15 years and she has accumulated so much stuff in that time being. Prior to that, she had her children living with her, but of course they are grown and have moved away. They don't live that far from her, so they can come and visit, but I never see that happening. Auntie Pat is 65 years old, and it just feels like no one is trying to help her. Myself and my mother and a few of my siblings go and check on her regularly. We have tried so hard to throw things out in her home, but she refuses to allow any of us to do so. She has roaches and probably other creatures living in this field. She says these are her things. These things mean something to her. She doesn't allow us to go into one of her child's bedrooms due to that child has passed and she wants everything left the way it was left by her daughter before her passing. I try to tell her over and over that Missy wouldn't want her holding on to things but just memories and that she wouldn't want her mom to live like this. I feel like the hoarding started happening after my cousin Missy passed away. She was very ill and lived to be 19 years old and was the youngest out of all of the kids. Well, ever since then, my aunt seems like she has went downhill. She refuses to throw anything away. Her home smells. And at times she doesn't look like she has bathed. Her own children never seem to want to help her out with this hoarding. All they keep saying is, well, that's her stuff. Let her deal with it. She doesn't want anyone touching her stuff. So what do you expect? us to do miss april i would never allow my mother let alone anyone i know live like this i'm trying so hard to get her to let us throw things away but she won't allow us half the time she won't allow us in her home 
The hoarding is horrible. There is barely anywhere to sit down or walk. She's collected all kinds of things and, has, and it has become a safety hazard in my eyes. What should I do? Any advice is helpful. Thank you, Annie. Got Annie and we have Auntie Pat. And Auntie Pat has some kids that really don't seem like they care too much because they're not going over there helping her get rid of the problem. Now we have this older lady. She's 65 years old and she's been living in filth. She has, and I'm just looking down because I'm looking at the notes, the, the email. So she has a, a a room in her house auntie pat has a room in her house that used to be one of her children's rooms that unfortunately is no longer with us who has passed away at the age of 19 which her name was missy now she doesn't want anyone going into her daughter's room and touching any of her daughter's belongings or moving it and i get that that is her daughter's room she wants the room to be left the way it was left by her daughter who passed away i understand that i have seen lots of series and shows and documentaries of people living in certain type of hoarding situation you know y'all know the show hoarders where y'all see people living in filth hoarding all types of junk collectibles or what have you i've watched plenty of these series i've watched every last show or episode probably on every last season of hoarders that was one of my favorite go-to shows to watch i think it kind of like helped me within my own self not to hoard because i do like to keep certain things and i do like to collect a lot of things i don't know what it is about me but i do like to collect things like i'm a huge barbie collector and so my garage in on one side is filled with garb uh, gar barbie boxes that have never been removed from their boxes have never been opened um so i do have that on one side of my garage in boxes and boxes and then on another side of my garage i may have like all of my other items but in my laundry room which is also my craft room on one side i made it into a craft room and i'm gonna give i'm gonna share with you what i find what what, what i went through now this woman she's hoarding things her daughter has passed away and who knows what she's hoarding she's probably hoarding all types of things because she did say she's she collects and she she hoards all kind of junk things that are not even worth keeping um for me when i noticed with myself like within probably like the first year after my son passed away i started going to the dollar tree every day and if it wasn't every day it was every other day and i was buying shit i was buying stuff to make crafts to make diy projects to do things to keep my mind busy and i felt like it did help me a lot but making these crafts and doing things it kept my mind free of not thinking so heavily on my son and so me what i turned that into is an everyday trip to dollar tree buying all kind of craft things and i would make these things now, i didn't make everything i did not use every craft item that i put in this room that i made into my laundry room slash craft room but i had good intentions okay and it kept my mind off of the negative and it kept my mind off of me feeling hurt because my son was no longer here so i guess you can say in a sense i was hoarding craft items and i still have all of these craft items they are very organized but yeah i was hoarding them and that was my way of not having to think so heavily like when i was making things i was buying these things to make things i was thinking about what i was going to make so that left me my mind free of thinking about other things like with my son if he was here or how would i do this if he was here like you know what i'm saying my mind was not focused on him it was focused on buying these things to make craft items with and so i i didn't see it as that until later on after i was able to really grieve and allowed myself to grieve when i looked in that room of mine and i was like why the fuck did i get all of these crafts that i'm not even gonna do anything with i mean and i did do stuff with you know i do have a whole channel dedicated to making DIY she's crafty it's called and I think I probably have like three videos on there I have numerous unedited videos on my hard drive that I had good intentions on editing and have yet to edit of things that I was making I realized this about myself like later on way after I, I made things and I stopped making things and I realized that this was not me wanting to make things but this was my way of trying to be free of thinking so heavily about my son and I realized this when I stopped using the crafts you know what I'm saying and I had to take a break from crafting and it just wasn't fun for me anymore and that's when I realized like this isn't really your passion but this is something you needed to do to keep your mind free and it's okay sometimes to do that but when it gets out of control 
control and it gets out of hand and you find yourself living in a dirty, filthy home, you know what I'm saying? That's when you have to realize like it's time for me to get help. Like people have all type of depressions. People go through depression in all type of ways. You could ask me if I was depressed about my son not being here and I would definitely tell you no. My mother has said that to me in the past, like, oh, you're depressed. And I would be like, I'm not depressed. I get up every morning and I clean my house. I'm not depressed, but each person has their own way of showing depression. And I guess that was just my way of dealing with things. You know what I'm saying? But each person is different. Now we have Auntie Pat who is 65 years old and she really doesn't have any help like that. Now we have Annie who has her own siblings and Annie's mom who go by to check on Pat. But they seem like they can't get Pat to throw any of this stuff away because she's just adamant that that's her shit. And after watching all of these Gordon shows, I have realized like people really do like their shit. It don't matter if it's garbage to you, it's they shit and they don't want you touching none of their shit. And I get that. Like who wants anyone to come into their house and start taking things out and removing things because this is my stuff. Regardless of what you may feel it is, it is my stuff. Now, there were all kind of programs. I, I I remember watching these series and they had these things called adult protection services, just like child protection services. CPS, there is APS, which are for adult protection services. And this happens a lot when you see older people who just really can't help themselves or, you know what I'm saying? or who don't want to help themselves or who don't want others to help them that's in their family because i get that too a lot of times we don't want our family members to help us because at times family members feel like they have the um the right to remove me from my home or the right to remove my things because we are related so that's a lot of times where older people don't want their family members involved in their life decisions because of these reasons and that's when adult protection services come into play they do help and protect the, uh, the, the, the elderly from being taken advantage of, being abused. Uh, or everything that the child protection services do for children is the same thing that they do for adults, but just they're adults. Now, you know, it's unfortunate that when people do go through things in life, it may not be for the best of them. When I say it may not be for the best of them, meaning she's going through something in her life where she's lost her one child. And granted, her her child is was 19 when she passed away i don't really know how how long ago it was but granted we do hold on to a lot sometimes we tie ourselves to like objects like okay take for granted this this object okay you know what uh, i wish i had it on me um hold on here it goes this is an object right it's a lighter it's a lighter it's a um it's one of those lighters that you can refill okay and it also does other things like you know it has it's like a camp lighter i guess i don't know but it's a lighter now you guys look at it as just a lighter that's all it is to you guys is it's a fucking lighter right but to me it's more than a lighter this right here is more than a lighter to me now granted it doesn't it doesn't have any more oh there it goes oh, okay there's some torch left in it this was my son Wuzzle's lighter, okay? This was his lighter. Now, this lighter I found in his drawer when I was cleaning out his room after like uh, about maybe like within a year or maybe a little bit less than a year of his passing, but I, I went through his things and I was cleaning out his, his room. And I found this lighter in his drawer. Now, I don't know if this lighter had any type of real value to him, but I know he liked to smoke weed. So I'm pretty sure that's what this lighter was used for, a torch lighter. So for me, it resembles my son. And so I took this lighter amongst quite a few other things of his and I held on to it. And so I keep it right here in my room. Now, I have tried to use it before to light my own weed, but you know, it just didn't work out for me. And I just keep it right there. That's not the only one that I have found in his room. He has a black one that I also have of his. So those lighters don't really hold any significant value to me but they were my sons if i tell you the other things that i have kept from his room i kept his do-rag i have it in a plastic baggie because it smells like his hair there was some change in his drawer i kept that and i put it in my cup and never to spend it People hold on to things for all type of reasons, and it may not seem like something to you, but it means something to that person. And it's sad though, when it becomes a problem and an issue, like we have the 65 year old woman who's living in filth. So Annie says she has roaches and God knows how many other kind of critter, creatures, excuse me, critters or creatures, all the same shit, living with her. Her, her children don't find it 
necessary to come and throw the things out because like they said oh she doesn't want you touching her stuff it's her stuff she doesn't want nobody bothering what are you willing to do maybe you need to put your foot down that's what we want you to do now i had this situation with my mom one time i went to visit her you know she lives in public housing so you know in public housing they have all type of creatures critters whatever roaches what have you so my mom is not a hoarder but she's like she likes to collect and I don't even want to call it collecting, but she likes to keep fabric, material, fabric, all kind of craft stuff, just like me. That's probably where I get it from. But she's a big time sewer. She sews. So she loves to buy material. You know, she loves buying fabric. She will buy her little fat quarters, little quarter thing. She will go on eBay or Etsy to the fabric store, wherever. When she was here, she, she likes to buy fabric. Does she use all this fabric? No, she does not. But she accumulates fabric and she collects it and she always has good intentions for it though she ain't been using and she same thing with me i had good intentions for all of the craft shit that i was buying so well there was this one particular time i went to visit with my mom in new york right i went to visit her and my sister lived there too but my sister will always be next door at her boyfriend's house in the next building so she really wasn't at the place with my mom like that now my mom you know what i'm saying she was alone most of the time but but she always had things to do keep herself busy now when i went over to visit her one time i had just got tired of seeing like certain shit like there's no reason why you should have three air conditioners piled up on top of each other and neither one of them is doing anything for you there's no reason why you should have this over here and all of this junk so i had to have my sister come with me we're gonna throw this shit in the dumpster we're gonna walk to the dumpster we're gonna go down the hill we're gonna roll this shit down the hill to the dumpster there's no reason why she should be living like this now mind you my mom is living in public housing she lives in the projects so she's had her material her fabric in certain sections all throughout the house shit that she knows she doesn't need and we did i did um i was able to get rid of a lot of stuff and cleared her house out for her and made it look so much needed and she was so much happier with it when i was there was she bitching me out and telling me not to throw shit out of course she was of course she was but i felt like you know what i understand you i'm not trying to be disrespectful to you but this is what i have to do for you because you are older and i'm not going to allow you to live with all of this stuff amongst you that you're not using you're not putting to use and it could just go in a dumpster or somebody else could use it you know what i'm saying so i was able to get rid of a lot of things and her whole living room was like from, it went from one looking thing to it just looked a whole lot better and she was so happy with the outcome you know what i'm saying we didn't have to buy anything new but we got rid of all the old things that she did not need in her home and sometimes we just have to put our foot down sometimes a lot of times we're not too strong willed because it might be our own parents and we have to put our foot down now this woman is living in filth and she can't get around there's nowhere to sit she said there's barely any space to move around so what i feel like you should do annie and this is just my opinion you know what I'm saying? Some people may feel like this is not, you shouldn't do that. But this is my opinion. This is a health hazard. Just like you said, it's a safety hazard. It's not just a safety hazard, but it's also a health hazard. When you have a person living in this type of filth to where they're not able to use certain things in their home, they're not able to move around in their home like they should, then it becomes a safety and a health risk, okay? So what I really feel like you should do, because a lot of people are hell-bent on you touching their things. We don't like people taking things from our homes because it is our stuff. Regardless of what it means to you, it is our stuff. But I just feel like sometimes we have to put our foot down. We have to be more strong-willed towards that person because, yeah, that is our relative. And we seem to cave in a lot to those people that we are related to. Now, true indeed, this is her home and these are her things. But true indeed, someone has to draw the line, right? Somebody has to draw the line. So what I would suggest that you would do, make a weekend trip for Auntie Pat's. I would say a day trip, but it's probably not going to be enough time. So what I want you to do is talk to your mom and your siblings, okay? And plan something to where you can get Auntie Pat out of the house on a Friday until Sunday evening, okay? If you can get her out longer than that, then that's great too. But have it to where, hey, Auntie Pat, we got this great weekend plan. We're going to go here and we want you to come along. We're going to do a family weekend and we're going to cook our favorite dishes. And we love when you make your favorite, you, your, your, you know, you know what dish. I don't know. She could be making baked macaroni and cheese, pies, whatever she makes that's really good. Or you know Auntie Pat for doing, then bring that up in the subject and let her know, hey, Auntie Pat, we're going to be doing this family thing for the weekend. And my mother wants you to be there 
along with us we want you to be there too so that way we can get her out of the house and you can get someone into her home to get rid of her things now true indeed not just anyone get rid of her things but the family you know what i'm saying stay you're, you're off limits to her daughter missy's room maybe you can go in the room and dust some things off and clean it up but do not throw anything of missy's away that's the one thing that i would not suggest you guys taking anything out of missy's room and putting it in the trash but all of the other things that you know are trash and are not usable and she's not using them clean up her home clean the walls off clean the furniture off clean wash the things for her so that way she has somewhere that's decent for her to live of course when she comes back home she's going to be pissed the fuck off she she will she's definitely going to be pissed off who's not going to be pissed off for you touching their things but sometimes you have to take the hard way the hard road the rough road sometimes you got to do what's best for people that are living in filth now granted if that was my mom like i said i already did that but if that if she was really really living in filth then i'm definitely gonna put my foot down i'm not gonna allow my mom to live like that it's unfortunate that she has grown kids that really don't want to do anything about it to her but maybe they feel like they're respecting their they're respecting her boundaries and that's a lot of times what people feel fail to realize like we are respecting your boundaries but we also need to put our foot down because this is not safe for you i'm sorry annie that um your auntie is going through that but i really suggest that y'all take her out of that house for a weekend a weekend trip you know what i'm saying a weekend and and really clean up her home she's gonna be pissed and she's gonna be upset with you but you know something in the long run she's going to forgive you and she's definitely going to appreciate what you've done who doesn't like a clean home who doesn't want to be somewhere where they're comfortable and it's okay for them to sit and relax who doesn't you know what i'm saying i'm not a hoarder i'm definitely not a hoarder I do have things that I like to collect. Like I said, my home is not overrun by anything that I have because I'll throw anybody's shit out. I don't really give a damn what it is. I will throw your shit out. I've thrown toys out because if you leave something somewhere in my home for more than a week, then that means that you don't really care about it or you don't want it. So I'm throwing it in the trash. I throw my own shit out. I will go through shit and I will throw shit out. Sometimes I'll be just amazed. Like when I redid my desk area and um, I have it on camera, you know what I'm saying? I have it on video of me rearranging shit now mind you y'all don't see everything because it took me like a couple of hours to get rid of stuff and it's like overwhelming at times when you look at your shit and you're like wow did i really have this much shit and how did i store it i'm really great at storing stuff and organizing shit so when i finally do put everything in a garbage bag and the garbage bag is overrun i'm just like wow April, you have all of the shit that you don't need. Now, I bet you today I can go through more shit and throw out more shit of mine that I that I didn't throw out a couple months ago. And that's just me. I'm good at throwing things away. I have no problem with that. But I'm a very organized person. Now, yeah, granted, I do have a room that's a laundry room slash craft room. And I don't even use my crafts in there anymore um am i gonna throw them out well hell fucking no i'm not gonna throw them out because i paid for them and i feel like you know what somebody can use them someone can use them someone could use all of these crafts that i have from glue to so many stickers to all kind of crafts people can use this stuff so why would i why would i throw it away maybe i'll give it away to like a school or something i've done that before you know what i'm saying i've given things away to a school um from crafts that i've accumulated and, and collected i don't know i go through a phase sometimes in my life but that was a phase that i went through and it, it was a phase of grieving and I just really didn't see it as such. I just felt like, you know, it kept my mind busy until I realized, like, I just want to do this only because I didn't want to think about my son. And that was a phase that I had to go through. And I had to realize, like, you have to. You're going to have to go through this. You're going to have to go through this grieving process, April, in order to be okay. And so when I stopped doing the crafts, I took a break from YouTube, like a month, you know, because I had already came back. But then I took another break. And that was my break of like me trying to figure my life out, not even my life out, but my myself. I had to realize like, yo, this is not going to work for you. You can't keep doing this. You're wasting money. And it was right after my ex-husband decided to go back to New York, you know, when his mom passed. Um, and it was in October of 2020, actually. So it was a year after my son passed. And I, I realized like I was happy with my ex-husband gone but and i also was able to clear my mind and then i realized like these crafts are not what i want to do anymore i don't want to do this shit. and i i finally sat down and was able to think 
and I was finally able to realize like you got to go through this grieving process so a lot of times we use shit objects things to cloud our minds from things that we really don't want to think about and that was me you know I did make some really nice things though I will I will I will tell you I did make some really nice DIY projects in the interim of me going through this grieving process I really did um check out my other YouTube my channel um she's crafty it's linked on here you know I might have like three videos but I did make some really cool things some of the things that I made that I didn't even get to showcase on YouTube but I really did make some nice things but you know it was me trying to you know block what what I was going through and it did work for a while it did work for a while until you know I finally sat down and thought about things so you know a lot of times people hoard because they just have a lot going on in their minds and a lot going on in their lives and hoarding for them can be a sign of just feeling okay hoarding crafts for me and making crafts DIYs was just, was an easy way for me to stop thinking so heavily on my son uh, granted I did think about him but I, I I focused a lot more on what I was gonna make and how I was gonna make it you know what I'm saying so I didn't realize that until like a year after and a lot of time had went by and a lot of purchasing had went by um but I realized that you know I realized that like you yo you gotta you gotta just let the process be and sometimes it could be a lingering thing and they could just keep on hoarding and hoarding and hoarding and that seems like what your aunt is going through so you really need someone to step in there and i really think like a great weekend trip would be great for her and it's not to be disrespectful to any of her belongings but it's to help her out because if you don't do it it's god knows who's going to do it and maybe aps adult protection services can but sometimes you don't want these type of agencies to step in because it may not always be a great outcome they may just remove her from her entire home and then what you know what i'm saying so i would suggest you and your family do it before anybody else does or anybody else gets the recollection or, or gets knowledge of your aunt living this way i would definitely try to clear it out and help her before any agencies do get knowledge of her living this way because you definitely don't want anybody to step in but sometimes we do have to allow other to step in just to make the situation better but i would definitely try to take her away for the weekend and have other family members go in and you know clean up her home and see how that works out for you guys i work i hope nothing but the best for you guys and please leave your comments down below for annie if you have ever experienced somebody that is a hoarder or has hoarded or you yourself or what agencies or what you can do to help this situation so moving right along to our next real talk hold on so she titled this she slept with the wrong one hi april and friends i hope all is well with everyone and i hope you are all having an amazing day like april would tell you i did i do say that did i say that today if i didn't i do hope you all have like a really amazing day my name is melody and when i tell you i have gone through it and back i have gone through it and back april i'm in my late 20s and i have been with the same man since i was 15 years old he and i are married but this is not about me but about a friend of mine who i need who i need some pure help with how do i talk to her and tell her about her nasty ways and free loving self this girl and me have been friends since high school we both have kids she's a wonderful friend but she is too loose if you know what i mean this is my home girl like a sister to me and i am so tired of watching her waste away she has been sleeping with every man damn near in our detroit town and this has to be a learning lesson for her by now because she has caught herpes from one of those so-called men or women she has slept with she came to me about a little over a month ago crying about it she was just diagnosed with herpes and honestly i don't think she has learned her lesson yet because instead of planning for her future and how to deal with the situation she'd rather go to the club and shake her ass and still sleep around now i don't really go out with her that much because i am married and i take my marriage serious sacred if you know what i mean what i look like stepping out half dressed at the club when i got a whole husband and kids at home that's not a look i'm trying to go for now i have told her about her ways and it's starting to embarrass me when we are out together because you know what they say birds of a feather flock together and she and i are nothing alike 
But she is my homegirl and I care for her, but she's way too loose with her kitty. And now that she has herpes, you would think she would slow down, be more cautious and care about herself. But from the looks of things, it doesn't seem like she cares. She really doesn't even know who gave it to her because she has slept with men and women and seems like her home is an open door to bum ass ninjas and whores. She has kids and I would think she would love for her kids to do right by her kids and self, but it just seems like she's going downwards and dry and trying to drag me with her. She gets upset if I don't come hang out with her, calls me names such as Debbie Downer, at home homie, boring Betty, you know, you name it, she is calling me such. Just, I'd rather be indoors with my family, April. That's just where I want to be. Like I said, she's a sister to me. I love her. But what am I supposed to do at this point? I'm tired of the awkward stares in public when we are together and feeling like I'm being judged for hanging around her. If this was your friend, would you dismiss her and stop hanging with her? How would you handle this? Thank you so much, April. Melody. So Melody friend is a hoe, okay? Melody friend is a 304. Melody's friend is a hoe, okay? And that's just exactly what the fuck it is. She's, she's just, just, she's just loosey-goosey. That's just what the fuck she is she's a hoe what is that what is that store song called I, I, there's a song that's something like that but yeah that's what it is i mean i ain't trying to diss the girl but she's a hoe okay mm, mm. and there is a true saying there is that that is the saying birds of a feather flock together that's why i don't be hanging around hoes okay because i don't want nobody thinking that i'm one of them as well and trying to try me because like no you get the other you'll get this part of april that you really don't want so yeah, birds of a feather do flock together. That's what they say. But sometimes that saying may not be true. But here's the thing, sweetheart. So Melody, you got a friend that's a hoe. And she's been sleeping around with everybody in the town of Detroit. Not only just men, but women. She's just trying to get her freak off to whoever. And now she done caught the unforgivable. That shit that's not going nowhere. That's going to stay with you for the rest of your motherfucking life. is herpes, okay? That's one the sexual transmitted disease that nobody would want to get, okay? Who the hell want to walk around with warts and, and pimples on their puss? okay or penis okay pimple penis and pimple puss who wants to walk around like that okay that's one of those sexy transmitted diseases that you just really feel like yo if i find out whoever gave this to me i'm gonna really hurt them that's some shit that you cannot get rid of okay that's some shit that you would not want why do people feel like it's okay to just sleep the fuck around like do you guys not get it already like aids and hiv been around forever okay since forever okay forever L long enough that you could say forever not maybe forever but long enough that you could say forever why y'all still sleeping around with just about anybody i don't understand some people will probably be feeling like oh shut up you just mad because you ain't getting none but yeah true indeed i have been um sexless for four years now and i'm fine with that okay y'all fail to realize april didn't had enough in her time i got five kids okay don't y'all think i had enough dick in my life that i don't i don't miss that shit at all i've had enough okay but here's the thing I wouldn't want if I if I was really in desperate need of some, I definitely wouldn't want to go out and get it just like that. People be sliding to the left, going on these apps, wanting sex. Like I be watching these shows, y'all, and y'all be like, you always watching something. I'm always watching something. You're right. I'm always watching something. I like watching documentaries. I love watching shows. Okay. I love watching some series that have a good meaning. Okay. And there are documentaries on STDs. There are documentaries. There are people on YouTube talking about, what is it? I think in Texas or Houston, Texas or somewhere in Texas where there are so many people with STDs. I don't know if it's because of a freak nick or a show, but there are a lot of people walking around with STDs. And why bother? Why would you want to have something like that? Like, okay, I know people are very promiscuous. There are people that are loosey goosey. There are women that really cannot go without. I don't understand why people cannot go without. I just don't get that part. Like, I don't understand how women could be so promiscuous but who am i to judge anybody because i'm not here to judge nobody because what you do in your time of need is your business okay what i do in my time of need is my motherfucking business but i damn sure don't want to do it in my time of need and, and the next day or the next couple weeks find out that i caught something in my time of need like that's embarrassing as an adult it's embarrassing and as a woman it's embarrassing as a man it's embarrassing like we should not be sleeping around with just about anybody people used to do that shit back in the day freely like i don't think ever it's cool to sleep around with anybody like don't y'all feel like y'all need to be in a relationship to sleep with somebody like that's my thing like i i just can never sleep with nobody without being in a relationship with them like you're not about to get this kitty without being in a relationship with me like okay you i'm gonna need to be in a relationship with you before you can get any of this puss okay that's just what it is but there are some people that don't feel that way and don't think that way and that's unfortunate because you should always think highly of yourself always put yourself on a pedestal even i'm not saying be cocky with it you know what i'm saying and conceited stuck up 
but I'm just saying that you should figure like your your jewels your purpose down there is a gift and like you don't want to give it to everybody like that's just my thing I don't know I've never been loosey goosey I just I don't know if it's my shyness or my awkwardness or my introvertedness but I just don't I'm just never been cool with just yeah you're not about to just get this no way no how mm -mm. I'm a very self-conscious person so I'm just not giving it up but your friend if that was my friend I would tell her about herself like bitch all you want to do is fuck okay she gonna get mad with you she gonna get really mad with you if you say it like that but sometimes you just got to give it to a person like that because when you be beating around the bush and sugarcoat shit to people they just don't seem like they get what the fuck you saying they just keep going with the willy-nilly they just don't get it you know what i'm saying so you have to come at them and be like bitch you're a hoe you what what's up okay you you really have to tell people like that unfortunately at times like some women just don't get the fact that you have to be told to stop being so loosey goosey promiscuous or being a motherfucking hoe now some people probably gonna be like that's not nice april to say that about the person but if you being a hoe and you sleeping with everybody and then you wake up and you have a disease and you still sleeping with people then the bar department of health need to be called on your ass now this girl got melody's friend got kids and she said that she her door is open to all types of okay well, here it goes she really doesn't even know who gave her the herpes because she has slept with men and women and seems like her home is an open door to bum ass ninjas and whores so basically her doors are open to whomever and she got kids living in now they both in their late 20s so who knows how old the children are but i'm pretty sure the children are not like teens like that like that depending on when she had her first kid we don't know she did not say that but either way she has children that live with her and now you got your door like it's a closet for all types of bum ass ninjas and whores like her friend said and what are you teaching your, your your kids to be the same way as you so maybe that's what you need to say to your friend melody uh that you are teaching your children the wrong thing and i'm not trying to judge you as a person i'm just saying as a friend and to a person that's like a sister to me i really feel like you need to settle down and chill out and love yourself and deal with the situation at hand that you have just learned about and learn who you are as a person and stop allowing all types of bum ass ninjas and whores into your home take advantage of you and your family this is where your children live you're inviting all kind of weirdos in your home you don't even know who you're inviting around your children and you think that it's okay like me personally i would not allow just anybody into my home especially to sleep with me if that's the things you're gonna do then maybe you should do that outside of the home but for right now your friend has herpes and she's not getting rid of that there's no cure for whole herpes there's no cure for that shit just like there's no cure for aids it's something that may slow it down okay i i ain't heard of no cure for aids y'all let me know if i'm wrong okay but i ain't see no cure for aids and i damn sure ain't seen no cure for herpes now herpes is one that you can't get rid of okay now i'm pretty sure there ain't occurred a cure for that i ain't heard none yet okay and i don't go around looking for std documentaries neither okay but i don't think that there's a cure for herpes as of yet but i do know that people do have their flare-ups when they get stressed out or what have you that's what i have learned and read in the past nah bitch don't have that shit thank god okay none at all but i'm just saying there's no cure for it so with that being said why would your friend still want to be very promiscuous you need to let her know that as well just because she doesn't know who gave it to her doesn't mean it's okay to go out there and just sleep around whoever and give it to everybody else okay that's one thing and what you should tell talk to her about is listen i understand that you have herpes and this is a situation that you have to deal with for the rest of your life but would you want to deal with something else versus this meaning like hiv and aids would she want to deal with that for the rest of her life because it's one thing to have to deal with one std but but then to have to deal with another one is a totally different you don't want to deal with that nobody wants to deal with certain things that they have to deal with for the rest of your life thank god you were blessed to wake up every morning but golly gee who wants to deal with being a herpes infected person for the rest of their life like that's just something you could have avoided in the first damn place now mind you i don't know if condoms are like the 110 percent safe way with dealing with people with herpes because if they have a flare-up like they can have a wart somewhere versus not on their penis or whatever and i'm pretty sure they can still give it to you i don't know i could be wrong i ain't never had it so i don't know okay 
But I'm just saying, like, you really do need to talk to your friend because if that's a friend to you and that's a sister to you, then you should be okay and comfortable with talking with her, Melody. Now, granted, birds of a feather two flock together. That's true, too. But that is your friend. Just because she took a different path doesn't mean that that's you. Fuck people when they stare at you in person. You know what? When people stare at me out in public, you know what I say? You want to take a picture that'll last you a whole lot longer. You know, sometimes we have to just play along and go along with the games and foolishness. If you know that that's not you as a person, then don't feel embarrassed and don't feel awkward being with her. But but I would feel embarrassed if I wasn't to speak to her about her ways and actions and how she's been carrying on. That's where you should feel embarrassed. That's where you should stand up for yourself and for your friend and let her know the type of person she is becoming. You know what I'm saying? Like you see friends going around friends. This is hard to find good friends these days because friends be feeling like they don't want to tell you shit. They don't want to talk to you about your, the way you be acting and shit like that. Listen, let me tell you something. I'm quick to tell you about yourself. And I'm, when I say that, I don't mean that in a negative way, but I will allow you to do something to me. And I don't mean that in a crazy way, neither. Like I will allow you to, okay this is my thing i don't think like friends should be arguing and fighting but people say that if if y'all are really good friends y'all will argue true indeed i just don't really like to take that route but if you do something that makes me feel uncomfortable as a friend i'm going to tell you about yourself now maybe there was a time in my life when i was much younger when i wouldn't do that i wouldn't do so i would just deal with it and take whatever but now that i'm older i just feel like this bitch i don't have to put up with none of your dumb shit i don't care if your shit is harming you and you only i still have to deal with it because i'm dealing with you and so once i deal with you that's dealing with all of your foolish nonsense and i'm not going to deal with that so therefore i'm going to say something to it and if you don't like what i got to say about what you're doing to harm yourself then bitch i don't know what to tell you but you're going to deal with this shit that i got to say today okay your friend, you really need to talk to her. You need to talk to her about STDs. You need to talk to her about her children. You need to talk to her about having AIDS or HIV. And you need to talk to her about living for her children and living the right way and doing the right thing for herself and loving herself. Seems like your friend doesn't really love herself. She's and, and, and I hate to say that, but some people would say like, no, that's not true. That's not true. But no, it seems like your friend really doesn't care for herself too much. And that's the reason why she does the things that she's doing. That's the reason why she is um, harming herself. And that's a, a way of self-harm. You sleep around with people you don't even know where they've been sleeping around at you sleeping with them that's self-harming yourself okay that's not caring about yourself that's not loving yourself that's not that's not giving a fuck about yourself you don't care about yourself and if you don't care about yourself what makes me believe that you care about your children because you have to be here and live for your children right so then you should learn to care for yourself a little bit more and that's what you need to talk to your friend about self-care and self-love that way that she'll realize that all these relationships are non-relationships that she's getting into and spreading her legs for are doing nothing but harming herself sometimes we just have to get out of a relationship and be on our own on our own selves let me tell y'all i have been single for four years and i love it when i tell you i fucking love it oh my god i love it i love being single i love not answering to nobody i love not having to fix nobody's lunch breakfast dinner iron your clothes do your laundry conversate with you entertain you sexually i'm loving it okay i guess because i have been with that same person for so long now that i love it i love being single i love being by myself you know what i'm saying and i wouldn't see it any other way if i was to get in a relationship it would probably it would have to be really really worth it for me because i love my life and i've learned to love myself and i've learned to learn myself okay and there's still more learning that i need to do as a person and there are still many things in my life that i want to accomplish and so therefore i love being single and i love my life i am std free okay i am sexless and i am happy and that's just the way it is but we have to sometimes take a break from the opposite sex or the same sex just to learn ourselves and there's nothing wrong with that and it seems like your friend melody has a lot of learning to do of who she is as a person maybe you need to talk to her about getting a little bit of therapy help some counseling and maybe taking up good quality positive um hobbies versus sexing other people as well as talk to her about those she's allowing into her home around her children because that is not safe either and that is the one thing that i would definitely keep in mind and instill in my friend she may be upset with you about the talk that you're going to have to her but you know what if you weren't a real friend or a sister then you wouldn't have this talk with her so therefore i think that is very important and crucial that you have this talk with your friend and that way you're saving her you don't know what you could be doing to help her but the one thing you do need to do is to have a conversation with her so that way she can see where she's leading herself to along with leading her children okay now on that note, I'm going to go. I got to get myself something to eat that I had cooked. You know, I'll be starving myself for y'all. Make sure y'all check out my website, girl. Okay. Mm. 
just finished watching this good series on Netflix called Your Honor. It has two seasons if you have not seen it before. It's the guy who played in Breaking Bad, also was the father in Breaking Bad, and the father in Malcolm in the Middle. I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but this show is called Your Honor, and there's only two seasons of it. Not sure if there's going to be a season three. I could see it being a season three, but it's a really good series. If you guys have watched it, leave it in the comments of what you thought about the series. I watched it the entire weekend. That's what I also watched, and it was great. I really did like it, and then I rewatched it. You know how you have to... I like to rewatch things because I already... So that way I can really understand. So that's just me in a nutshell. But yeah, if you haven't checked it out, you're looking for something to watch, check out Your Honor on Netflix. It was really great. And also check out goingwiththewindwigs.weebly.com where you can get some really, really nice Apple Watch bands and bracelets, okay, to share with your loved ones if you choose to. Along with that, some really great wigs like Bob's. I don't know that, you know, things like that, that you like, you know, lace front wigs, but check me out. I will post it all down below. Y'all already know your girl got to go, but I love y'all and I will see y'all in another video. Leave y'all comments and I'll see y'all down in the comments.